All right, so today we're gonna talk about my four steps for perfect skin retouch, all right? I got my uh, trusty iPad Pro with Astro Pad loading up right now. So right here, you can see my after image. This is an image that I've already processed and what I'm gonna do is reverse engineer it and start showing you what I do to make perfect skin. So this is the after. And this is what we started with, right? Let's roll intro and then get right into this. So this is the after image. What I'm gonna do is reverse engineer it and show you how I achieve perfect skin. So if I turn off all these layers, you'll see the before. So this is the starting image. And we went from this to this, all right? So I'm not gonna go through all of my editing steps here, just the perfect skin steps, all right? So the first thing I like to do when working with a new image is assess that image. I like to uh, open it up in Adobe Fix on my iPad, use my Apple Pencil, and just kind of go through all the blemishes and mark them off. Make a roadmap for myself when I get in front of Photoshop and I start editing. The worst thing for me is when I get all the way to the end of an edit or I get uh, 30 minutes into an edit and then realize a couple things that I should have gotten as blemishes in the very beginning steps. So open this in Adobe Fix and marking up all the blemishes that I need to fix helps me with planning out my edits or it helps me with executing my edits when I get that image into Photoshop. I'm not gonna show you that step now. I'll show you that step in the next video, but let's say I've already did that. I've already crossed off or I've already circled all the blemishes I need to correct. Now I have that image into Photoshop and I'm ready to make those corrections. So the first tool I'm gonna use is the patch tool. All right, let's go back over here. I'm gonna turn these uh, layers off again. Bam, so we got this original image. So let's go here. We got my background in here. We got the model in here. And then you see my blemish, re blemish removal layer. So this layer right here is where I removed all the blemishes. What I'm gonna do is turn that layer off. I'm gonna create a new layer. If you're working on a Mac computer, you're going to do Shift, Option, Command, E. And that's going to merge all of your previous layers onto a new layer. We're going to select our patch tool. So with our patch tool, we're going to start fixing or correcting some of these, uh, some of these blemishes. I'm going to zoom in a lot closer. And you'll see spots like this here and just drag them onto clearer skin. So anything you want to remove, you just circle and drag onto clearer skin. So keep in mind, I've already processed this image. So I'm just going to go through a couple of these really quickly, just so you can see how I do this. Then I'm going to skip forward a couple, a couple steps. So let's fast forward now, all right? Bam, so let's say we got our blemishes all done, okay? So we got all of our blemishes corrected, so our next step is frequency separation. Yes, frequency separation is probably the closest you'll get to a holy grail for skin editing. 
cool thing about frequency separation, so some of you might have heard the, the term before frequency separation, but not really sure what it is. So frequency, just really, really, really short. Frequency is oscillation, right? Frequency is usually judged or measured by a certain amount of oscillations in a certain period of time. Something with a high frequency uh, oscillates a lot in uh, seconds or minutes. Something with a low frequency oscillates very little in seconds or minutes. Um, so when we look at skin, frequency separation or uh, is separating your high and your low frequencies. So the way that translates into skin, something that changes a lot is skin texture. So your high frequency for skin is your skin texture. Your low frequency is something that doesn't change a lot. Something that doesn't change a lot in skin is skin color or skin tone. So. What frequency separation does is separates your skin tone and your skin texture in two different layers. From there, you're able to blend and fix more blemishes, blotches, uh, uneven skin tone. You're able to fix that, but still maintain the texture of the skin. All right, I'll show you how to set that up. So first off, I'm gonna create two new layers and merge the below layers. Right on your Mac again, that's Shift Alt Command E. First layer, second layer. I'm going to name the first layer Tone, that's going to be my low frequency. I'm going to name the second layer details. That's going to be my high frequency. So my next step here, I'm going to go back to tone. I'm going to hide details because I just want to see my tone for a minute. And I'm going to blur that layer. So we're going to go to uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what we're looking to, we're looking to blur this layer to the point where we can barely make out the details. We could see the eye, we can see facial structure, but the rest of the details are really, 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 really soft. All right? For each photo, it's going to be a little bit different. It depends on the megapixels of your camera. So for me, for this particular image, I think I'm going to keep it at about seven. So next, we're going to go back to our details layer and turn that on. Right? We got details highlighted. After you highlight details, we're going to go to image and apply image. Now we want to subtract. So we're going to go to layer. We're going to choose which layer we want to subtract. We want to subtract the tone layer. So let's find that. Tone, LF, that's what I named my layer. For blending, we're gonna change that from multiply to subtract. Scale, we're gonna make that two. Offset, 128. We're gonna hit okay here. Next up, we're going to change this layer to Linear Light. So now we have our details and our tone on two separate layers. Those two, that details and tone layer, make up the exact same image, split. So if I turn off details, you'll see the blurred layer below. If I turn details back on and turn off tone, you'll see hyper detail. The next step we're gonna do is we're going to blend on the tone layer. Details is gonna keep all of our details in our photos and we're gonna go, we're gonna zoom in a little closer. We're gonna click on brush, but hold it down. We're gonna go to mixer brush. The mixer brush is going to let us blend what's on the tone layer. 
It's gonna help us knock out more blemishes and then just smoothen the skin a little more, but still maintain that texture, maintain that detail. I'm actually to make this easy, I'm going to merge these two layers or create them or put them in a group by holding Command G or tapping Command G and we're going to name this FS, Frequency Separation. That way we can easily bounce back and forth between what we're doing here. Now you can really see that the area that I just worked with on the cheek, it really blend those areas together, right? I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna do a little bit of, of exaggerated on this, uh, only because like I mentioned before, I've already finished this image, but I want you to see what you can do with this if you really take your time and go through the frequency separation. What I tend to do, so a lot of people talk about brushing with the skin texture, which is cool. You can brush with the skin texture. I tend to brush with the light. So if there's bright areas, I'll brush within that bright area. Dark area, brush within that dark area. Um, you probably don't want to blend the light to the dark. That can make some really freaky looking effects. So it's very rare that you want to do that. All right, and I'll show you instances where you might do that. So we'll look at the forehead in this area here. We can see that it's kind of uh, getting a little darker here, but as I lightly brush, it's kind of blending that darkness together. And I'm lifting and dropping the brush. So if I hide that, you'll see how that frequency separation has blended those uneven tones together. All right, let me adjust the brush. You see this bright spot here? I wanna get rid of that. There, got rid of that spot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let you play around with that. You can play around with that after the video in your own time, but I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Let's say we went through this entire image and we were able to uh, blend in a lot of the tone. I'm gonna turn my original frequency separation layer back on. So my next step is a plugin called Portraiture. But Portraiture is not a free plugin. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. It's not an essential steps, but it just helps blend or perfect that skin just a little bit more. All right. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. You guessed it. Shift, Op, Command, E. I'm going to go over to my filters. There's Portraiture. So in portraiture, what I'm gonna do is select the skin tone. So I'm gonna drag it across here. And then on the right, you'll be able to see the area of what's gonna be uh, blended, what is gonna treat as skin and smooth for you. That looks good. I'm gonna hit okay. As you can see, it added just a little more smoothness to that skin. Right, you see what that did there? It's pretty cool. Now, sometimes portraiture can be overpowering and I don't want people to look at my photos and say, oh, he used portraiture. So what I do is after I apply that layer, I turn the opacity down a little bit. So for this here, I'm probably gonna drop it down, kind of go by feel here. I'm gonna drop it down to about 50. That way it still looks pretty natural my last step that I like to do for perfect skin is dodge and burn or highlight enhance or however you want to call it. 
Dodge and Burn is essential after this because after all these steps, after frequency separation, after portraiture, what you would notice is that a lot of your highlights may have been covered up or blended in. This dodge and burn step will help bring back some of those details. Don't forget, if you're learning something so far, make sure you hit like and subscribe on this video. Drop a comment too. Start a new layer. I'm gonna fill this layer with gray. So I'm gonna hit the color. If you don't already know, the 50% gray is 128 RGB. So I'm gonna do 128 R, 128 G, 128B. Hit okay there. Drop that paint bucket. And I'm gonna change this layer to soft light. All right. Looks like it's nothing there, but then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my dodge tool. I'm gonna start painting in, gently painting in some light. And this is just bringing back some of the highlight that I made a mistake and took out. Once again, since I've already finished this image, I'm just gonna kind of exaggerate a little bit, but you definitely wanna bring highlight back to the cheek, the chin, the tip of the nose, and the forehead. You don't wanna go overboard with this, but you do wanna make sure you bring those highlights back. If you go overboard with it, you'll see instances where photographers has these big paint strokes like that there. That's ugly to see one of those big highlight paint strokes down a model's arm or across a woman's chest. It's very, very displeasing to the eye. So be very gentle with it. And if you even think you can see what you just did, go back and turn the opacity down on that layer. Another thing you can do to fix mistakes, you can select your paintbrush with 50% gray, still your foreground color. And then if you go over the area you just painted in, it'll remove it. All right, that's kind of your eraser tool right there for dodge and burn. So there you have it. Those are my steps, my four essential steps for perfect skin. This will help you tremendously, I hope. When I learned these different techniques, I've learned these over a course of probably about 10 years and I've really just put them together and perfected them and made them my own. My recommendation for you is to do the same. Pick and choose what parts of these help you out in your workflow and perfect it for you, all right? If you learned anything at all, like I said before, like and subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos, all right? I'm gonna have more walkthroughs, more behind the scenes of photo shoots coming up, all right?